Hello! Are we did? Yeah. We, yeah, we're live. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Z DZG Elysium versus Team Bye Week here at Aegis's League. I'm joined with uh, Maggie's. Yes, and a uh, bit of a rough start. Team Bye Week not able to get in a E sub in time, having to be forced to FF forfeit the first game, and uh, now we have. In, go, are going into game two, both teams having no information the wiser, but at least I'm still up the 1-0. We're hoping to get into game two here. As we're waiting for the draft to start. Oh, is it started? Looks like? Yes. Oh, yeah, cool. so okay. far, Elysium banned out the Lilia, waiting on the second band. Band coming in, going to be the Anivia taken away. And Viego Trundle taken away, both from... Uh, present in the jungle for Elysium. Looking good so far. I see a lot of meta bands as well as Wukong and Viego in there. Splash is airy. And they don't want to deal with Trundle. I guess they're trying to draft a tank. Yeah, they're likely trying to draft a tank. Stena is going to be locked in first for Team Bye Week. And that is something that is a lot of teams are, are kind of fighting for now. But it's something that hasn't really been a super high priority for Elysium. So the question comes in, did, is Team Bye Week really confident that they need to make sure they get that? Or do they have some information that we may be missing? Ash is going to be the lock-in for Elysium here. One thing that we saw last week was Hello, DCG Hello on the Ash. But personally, I'm an ad I'm a strong advocate for the Ash support being very viable. Now, do you think they'll run that with a Misfortune or no? Because that used to be a thing, Misfortune with Ash. Uh, or, oh, likely not. But anybody who follows our socials will know that DZG is, or Elysium specifically, is very fond of the Swain. So. This is, I believe, a three, if not, or yeah, with Ash locked in, it's going to be a three-way flex of top, mid, and support. So a very flexible champion, and I am sure Elysium is glad they finally got that through after being banned away against them both times in week one. Oh, looks like they'll pick up the Kinch here for team by week. Going probably yeah. support top, maybe? Probably top. Uh, likely, likely going to be support or farming in the bot lane with the Senna. Very classic duo, but one that can get that can get poked out. Tom Kinch not having a whole lot of range, and Udir's the hover. I'm a little hesitant thinking that would be actually locked in, but you never fully know. Looks like it and is. And it is. It is locked in. Udir locked into the jungle for split breed. Bread. Not sure how how he wants his name pronounced. And person, I'm not too familiar with a whole lot of Udir matchups. And but if you, I'm at least in here, it feels like you're wanting to go something in the jungle since you know that matchup and you're holding on to that Swain flex for either top or mid. Yes, and they still have that versatility, but they need to make a decision as they grab the volley bear picked up. Probably for the jungle. It's been the most popular. It's moved out of top lane. We'll move into band phase. We got a Mordekaiser band. Zoning out the tops. Yeah. Volleybear locked in is something that we're seeing flexed around a lot. But it's more popular in the jungle. We can kind of see in a second how we feel Team Bye Week is going to feel that pick. If they think it's definitely going to one spot over the other. But we'll have to kind of wait to see how these go out. So Orn taken away from ICGE, having a, had a really solid game on it last week. Really strong weak side, able to survive lane and still be a huge factor when it came later in. In that 40, I believe 41 minute uh, plug fest of a game with just back and forth blows. Mm, must have been a grueling match, sounds like. Yeah, it was an extremely long one, and I'm sure if you're Elysium, you're not wanting a repeat of that. With Vex being taken off the table, 
uh, against Hazed here. Something that hasn't been banned against them, but again, only week one, so always Please. definitely a possibility. Has a, quite a few games on it in solo queue, so a solid pick to follow up a uh, dive or an engage comp like their team by week is kind of looking to smooth out, smooth out with. Ooh, and the blitz band to stop them from pulling them into the Ash uh, Swain combo of the team fights, and just deciding how the fight goes before it even starts with just a single blitz hook. Yeah, I would hazard to say that I'm not a huge fan of that blitz ban, primarily because two out of your three champions on Team Bye Week don't mind if you're getting hooked the, from the majority of the time. You really only have to keep the Senna, and if you see a Blitz here... Okay, so we see Renata locked in, meaning this is either a Swain top or a Swain mid. Still holding the double flex of the Swain and the Volley Bear. So, Team Biwig probably just as confused as us as to where all this will be going. If I had to take a shot in the dark, I'd say Swain mid, Volley jungle, and then Ash and Renata bot lane together. Number yeah, two. and... For those who saw last week's Elysium game, this Renata may be kind of a breath of fresh air because Symphonic's been playing a lot of Engage, and it's not really the meta for most supports to be playing those Engage supports. The Enchanter is really benefiting from the durability patch, keeping themselves alive. And we have Zareth locked in, Gwen being hovered by Team Biweek. And looks like it's... Okay, they're going to change over to the Jax last second. Which I believe is a decent matchup into Volibear if they get sent up there. Maybe they're and... trying to force uh, Elysium's hand and make the Volibear go back to jungle and not flex it top. Yeah, that's definitely a possibility. Elysium's going to have to kind of... Going to have to show their hand. Even though I believe... Yeah, I believe they were the team last week that had a uh, two-way flex after locking in all five. Uh, Irelia is going to be the lock-in for ICG. ICG in the last week, and we'll, we will preface this with it's only a one week. You don't really know how teams work and like how teams want to play until past like maybe week three, week four. That's when we start seeing things start to smooth themselves out. But ICG has been ma made himself a really strong player for this team of Elysium. And well, that's good because on Aurelia, you can very uh, much hyper carry and get the game out of control in your favor. So, yeah, I uh, looking over this draft as t the teams kind of get back in order from the kind of shuffle that was the delay in between this. I am looking, I kind of prefer Elysium's draft and trying to avoid any biases. It feels like they have a lot of answers to Team Bye Week's questions of, if we're going to engage Jax, your dear Tom Kinch. Well, we have a Renata and an Irelia, so good luck, come, or a Renata and a Swain, so good luck just walking into us. Okay, well, we'll sit back and poke. Well, we have an Ash ult and a Volley Bear to get on top of your poke. So... It feels like a lot of Team Bye Week has a few different things they can do, but Elysium's managed to get enough answers for all those different questions. Yeah, it does seem that way. Um, I see Team Bye Week's a lot more tankier than uh, Team Elysium overall, with the Kench, Udyr, and the Jax. Oh, you know, and then they've got the healing sustain from Senna, whereas Elysium's only heal sustain is their self heal and shield from Renata, you know, Swain self heals and. Uh, Aurelia usually builds like a life stealing item here or there and gets a little bit of auto proc healing from executing minions from dashes. So we'll see if that pays out. But Team Biweek's a lot more durable than Elysium. Um, they do scale with Cinna really well. Uh, Zerath turns online mid game. Jack's uh, late game slip push is going to be a problem they're going to have to deal with and be good on rotations to stop that from losing towers on the side lane. A lot of policing by Elysium is going to be needed for that. For sure. Yeah, and yes, Team Biowake is very durable, uh, wanting those extended fights so Seneca can 
be kind of free firing from the back line. But there's a lot of people on Elysium who can comfortably build uh, percent health damage. You have Aurelia who likely will be going the Bork for those duels. Yep. And you have someone like a Swain who's going to be wanting to go into those burn items like the Leandries, the Demotic Embrace. And those kind of options make it really hard for your tanky front lines to tank a lot of damage whenever they have or at least them is burning a lot of the increased or increased health. I could see Team Biweek winning through Cinna scaling. A lot of good skill shot hits by Zerath. Um, maybe some good picks by Udir comboed with it. Um, and then just Jack split pushing. Uh, I think the big win for them would probably be Jack split pushing if it's ignored and allowed to get that deep and not answered or, you know, gets fed enough to pull that off sort of thing. So, but I'd rather to say Elysium can just win the team fight straight out. They can just, you know, group up and just destroy the Team Biweek's team. Uh, with their different uh, ways of engaging, countering, kiting, um, and you know, just ranged assault uh, to stop them from poking them down uh, for a durability match with Zerath and Senna. So Yeah, and I don't want to do a whole lot of talking before we see any possible swaps come out, but ICG has been the one to lock in the Swain, and Lovable is locking in the Irelia. They have until, I believe, 20 seconds on the timer, to do any swaps but that would change that matchup in the top lane a lot in my opinion because i think irelia is not as good into jacks as swain would be since swain isn't reliant on those auto attacks yeah range versus melee situation definitely and... i was gonna say definitely and looks like it is gonna be icg piloting the swain likely going top irelia and on lovable going to be mid lane against Zerath. Uh, Ionic, what do you, how do you uh, think this, how do you think each team wins and which team are you going to take for this? Since I already kind of give my opinion. Um, I could see Elysium winning this pretty easily. Um, <clears throat> Bye week was really tripped up in draft. It caught him off guard, especially with his last minute swap with Swain top and I really admit it's really going to throw him to a loop. It depends on execution by Elysium to pull this off. I really, really need to get it in up close and personal with Zerath and what we'll dodge the stun and the, you know, big AOE slow that he does. Um, and watch out for obviously just being poked down before he even gets close to it. Um, but if I really get some kills and fed that, Zerath will be praying to get out of that lane as fast as possible. Even if you play safe and distance, it's not going to, it's not going to save you. If I really can just dive deep with the, you know, once I get kills. Um, so he needs to be careful not to get too close to Jax and kite it properly and should be fine. Um, just It's about a matter of surviving laning phase, honestly, for Elysium. They survive laning phase and don't let Jax or Zerath get ahead or at least Zerath break even to scale and then Jax get ahead top. Uh, they should be fine. And then don't let the game drag out too long and it's Elysium's as well because Senna wants it to go out real long to get scaling online. Uh, she collects souls and uh, you know farm. So... We'll see, but I got my money on D uh, DZG Elysium based off the draft and um, what I've seen so far. Yeah, so I would also share my opinion. I think Elysium is going to want to play this early game pretty safe, but they can't let Team Biweek start to stack up these neutral objectives because Elysium needs the, the ability to threaten... Uh, team bye week to force them into a fight early or into the mid game because if let's say team bye week gets two of these dragons well they could just give up the next two three dragons and sit survive the mid game and then they have the Senna the jacks online that is true that is true and that's what the that was honestly their big win cons is jacks and Senna um, Zerath can get you through the mid game and hand it off, you know, pass the baton over to Jackson Senna to close it out. But if they can deny that and stop the late game from happening, you know, they can end it before, you know, the timer hits that. I don't know what time that would be depending on, you know, how many kills they get and farm lead or neutral objectives. So, yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but as we wait to get into this game, we are going to toss it over to a quick break. And while we are into this break, why don't you go ahead and check out our First long-term sponsor going to be Dubby has no sugar, no fillers, no artificial colors or dyes. Use code DZGWIN at checkout for 10% off. 
and we will be back shortly with the second game of this matchup. See you then. And welcome back as we start here at the game. Live is there, running out to get their five point. Uh, doesn't look like there's going to be Invade at the start of this game. Uh, you'll see blue team is the team Biweek, and red team is DZG Elysium. Uh, Matt? Yeah. Looking at runes and summoner choices, not a whole lot to speak of. You have... The main thing that is uh, kind of important to bring out is you have First Strike on Xerath, going to be kind of trying to generate that extra income in this range v melee matchup, and the exhaust to kind of help peel back that Aurelia. So Hazed here really paying a lot of respect to the abil to Lovable's ability to kind of 100 to 0 him if he doesn't have the ability to buy any space. Oh, looks like Paper Wall for Junior is going to find ICGE. A little poke. A little yeah, just a little slap around. ICG <laughs> gets a Conqueror stack, but doesn't get much else. Uh, didn't end up dropping the ward, so they don't know. At least him doesn't know if Team Bywick got a deep ward onto their red buff. But may have a slight hint with Paper Wall getting further out or quicker back to the lane. Yeah, that may be a, a small indicator of that. As the poke and the first strikes are connecting for uh, Haze in the mid lane. Yeah, Whoa. and Symphonic and Hello here getting the earlier setup in the lane. Trying to throw some poke back. It's really, uh, it's a really scrappy down here. A lot of poke going back and forth. A little non-stop action with autos and, uh, some keys. Zavonic taking the most of the blow, hitting some health pots for Elysium's bot lane. Yeah, I don't expect a whole lot to happen except for these just blows. Uh, DCG gets level two first. They do push that advantage on top of Optium, but Blitz Force in the back, but they re-engage, running right down at Zephonic, getting lower and lower down to two, able to eat. There's Ignite, forced to flash out to safety, but Bubble is forced to hit the heal to eject away from uh, Hello's damage on the Ash. So that's a really interesting trade. Team Bowie putting a lot of uh, effort into trying to chunk out Zephonic, but I mean, regarding that, and kind of ignoring the heal on the side of Senna, because she can kind of top off herself and the Tom Kinch. I do favor Elysium in that trade just a tad more, because you have the health on your Ash, who wants to be the one stepping up. The question is, is Zephonic going to be able to do anything with, even though he is lower in health? Let's say, well, with the root pull over to the right, and there's the bind combo, does not connect, it hits the minion instead. Meanwhile, CG does harass Paperwall Jr. and looks like Angry Present has caught out Split Breed with a follow-up from ICG following behind Jax right behind that, barreling right into the Irelia. Looks like he will get out on the minimap as we go back to bot lane and check out the poke shenanigans down here. Yeah, and Split Breed was able to get the Scuttle Crab, but has to spin the ghost. And if you're the laners for Elysium here, 
They kind of breathe in a breath of fresh air because you can kind of not worry as much with, about Udyr without his ghost. Because early on, whenever he doesn't have something like the him tank, we have a fight coming up mid. It looks like he'll back it up, slowly cut it out. The stun connected didn't mark, but it wasn't enough. Case just easily walks it out. He wasn't yeah. even forced to use exhaust there, too. Wasn't forced to use the exhaust, but Lovable getting the slightly beneficial trade. But Slippery's going to have a decently hard time getting much out of this early game with his ghost being down. Since he's not going to be able to quite quickly and quite as quickly run down the members of Elysium. But we yeah, do have a potential cool. gank coming out mid. The ward for Elysium just expired. Oh, and there's the knockout, no flash, and Vonic's dead to the right, and there's the hit, and first blood achieved by Slippery as it follows up on DG's hello with the bear stone, tiger stance, flip, angry presence on the side, but it does not engage. The slow's there, angry presence just sits there and watches. Looks like it does not want to engage on this. Yeah, and Symphonic losing its flash there gets punished by the gank and the combination of the knockup from Tom Kinch and the stun from Udyr. Angry President trying to see if he can catch somebody overextending for hello, but the only person who really did that was Slipreed, and he saw earlier how hard this Udyr is to kill, even though he has no ghost or flash since he took ghosts over it. He doesn't really ha- he does nobody really has the damage to deal with him. Ooh. The backs get interrupted oh. here. Oh, and the dash away gets interrupted as well. Well played by Symphonic there, but there's no follow-up from DZG. Hello, not in range. I actually really like this from Symphonic here. Desyncing the back timers between Tom Kench and Senna, or Opti and Bubble Lift. And oh. was trying Ooh. to find it again, takes a tower shot. But uh, the one shot doesn't do too much. The exhaust comes out mid. Yeah. Meanwhile, the ex uh, lovable gets a full engage on Haze, but doesn't do quite the damage he's looking for. Uh, still missing the core items to really pack a punch onto Haze. Uh, easy trade for Haze to take, and they both back up. And it looks like lovable will heal up from the minions and do some roaming for wards and some vision control. Yeah, but going back to that bot lane trade of Zymphonic able to stop off these recall really makes it a, a lot easier for them to get that push because once the once the wave crashed, we saw the, the Senna bubble lift on the Senna was already back in lane. So in, in doing that, you kind of make sure that CS either gets wasted or Senna gets reduced soul income. ICG does get traded upon. Paper Wall for Junior gets a free trade and takes a good chunk of ICG's uh, health up in the top lane. Looks like we got yeah. some poke here. Some poke going out through mid lane from Haze. And it looks like we have an invade for Vision coming from Symphonic. A ward just by Raptors is going to spot Udyr, I believe. And I think Elysium is starting up this dragon, or at least threatening it. Yeah, it looks like they are setting up for the ocean or looking to get a pick by it. They do have vision control here. That did not reveal that them. He does not know this is a free connect, and down he goes. Looks like Split Breed will get split away from his team, but here comes Bubble Lane flashing in right there with Bubble Lift on top of the knockout from Opti on top of Symphonic. There's the root. There's the Aurelia also on top of the Ignite. We'll kill Symphonic in the back line. Meanwhile, Split Breed rides to the left, and down goes the Cena from the Aurelia on top of a lovable. Goes back to the Split Breed, and there's the Ash Arrow disconnect to Zorath, who's point blank in target. There's Opti trying to save his haze, but down it goes. Opti to the left and running from the the Volibear and Lovable, Angry Presence looking to get it, and it looks like a couple autos will connect. Udyr is hiding over by the Raptor's bush and will get to safety. It looks like Opti will make the opt out of that situation. Slippery will start his Raptors, and that looks like a free Ocean Dragon for DZG Elysium. Yeah, uh, gonna be a free Dragon. Uh, I think if uh, Team Bai wanted, they could have a chance contested, but it's still really risky. But that was really well played by Lovable, able to get onto the back line and threaten it while present kind of dealing with the Udyr and the Tom Kinch on the front line. Even though it's a skirmish, not necessarily a battle line set up as these teams would like them, uh, at least them kind of getting the fight they want, losing Symphonic, but getting two kills on the volley, uh, kill on the volleyball and a kill on the Irelia. So kind of where you want that gold to be. 
Yeah, another thing I noticed is the bonus of having Aurelia mid is she's going to be closer to a lot of fights. So she'll have a lot more opportunities to get kills to get ahead. Looks like yeah, Paper Wall Green can take a huge amount of damage. Oh my gosh. Taking a lot of damage was likely just planning on resetting anyways. So it doesn't really matter how much health he loses. And Elysium is five strong up here at nine minutes for this Herald. Wow, that's a lot of enforcements for the first Herald. Usually it's just the jungler and the support. And instead it's most of the team. <laughs> or something is nearby as well. Wow. That's the free uncontested Herald. Uh, just by the right of Elysium showing up to bully them out of it. What I'll say is that's Elysium actually has really good vision control for how early on in the game it is. Only only Zephonic having a sweeper, and uh, I think the support quest either just fit getting done before that or getting fun getting done during it. Uh, but it got, it it, got done during uh, when Kinch was, uh, he tried to stop Kinch's recall under tower. The star showed all right, up under Renata. All right. Well, in that case. They still had amazing vision control. All the entrances from bi weeks blue side were covered, and they knew exactly that this Udyr didn't want to fight. Senna was just getting there at the end, and they picked that fight having basically full information. Exactly, exactly. It's playing right into DZG's Elysium's put court right now and they are leading it um it's really good control and exactly the game plan they need to win this game um as far as team bye week needs they need to just sit back play it safe and scale up wait for uh jack's uh river wall for junior to get online as well as bubble lift uh Cinna. i mean not necessarily trying to pat myself on the back too much but this game is playing out exactly how elise how i said elysium wanted it to go they are getting a few early they're getting actually so far all of the early objectives the first dragon and first herald and mm. it's a even game state uh besides that about a 500 gold lead but with angry presence sitting hold on looks like paper wall junior will engage this might be a full fight there's the ultimate from icge and there's the hook combo it looks like it's down in the there's the blast one more auto and looks like it's forced the flash there's the flashing response and down it goes Free 1v1 win in the side of ICG. ICG just showing off why this was banned against them twice before. Looks like they will drop that Herald they got early. It will connect and get some free plates. But Split Breed will take it, stun the Anger Present. No tower shots. No, it does connect to Anger Present from the burn and lightning. Yeah, it's some harassment going on bot lane, but it's a mid game Tom Kench Senna you don't really poke them out anymore you yeah. kind of got all the poke you can against them early Senna has her Q cooldown low enough that she can keep Tom Kench topped off and Tom Kench has enough health and resistances to kind of keep himself shield. alive yeah it's just it's a, it turns into a bit of a, what you used to be called a wet noodle fight top lane in the top lane right now because they can't really uh, keep up with the sustain that uh, they have and looks like they will en engage on hello There's the knockoff roof really well hit the flash pulls it back into the ultimate and DTG as well The ultimate from Zora from downtown picks it up and throwing again on Zymphonic It looks like that's two down the bot lane one more hit There's the ultimate or the revive from Renata here comes angry present from the side ultimate drop on top of bubble Lift. There's a stun root lightning chain it looks like bubble Lift will go down though There's the heel running out and Obdi is trying to opt him out and he does get it out to safety Thanks for Hayes for the cover fire to help that bot lane play go through smoothly for Team Bi Week. Yeah, and Hello and Zephonic kind of getting caught on separate pages there. Zephonic going for wards and Hello not necessarily respecting the engage range of Opti on the Tom Kinch. And one thing I kind of want to criticize that I've seen in a couple fights is it feels like Zephonic's been using his. Uh, w, I forget the name of the ability. Stun oh, misses. Well, Hayes might be dead there. Did miss the stun and Q backwards, but the tower did save Hayes from death there, from lovable. Yeah, but as I was saying, and that's sort of a possible pick. It's gonna take the blast gun out or so. Zymphonic's fine. Present? I'm not sure if you want to be sitting there much longer with the Udyr taking red buff. Jungle's kind of sink ships in the night. <laughs> Looks like they're getting a free mountain dragon too. Thanks to the great vision control by Zymphonic there. Yeah, really good vision control, but I want to see throughout the later parts of this game, 
is how he utilizes his W because it's really felt kind of suboptimal so far. Not he may be getting the increased attack speed on the people he wants, but he's not getting the bailout health. They're not he's not getting the increased life for people like Hello. Oh yeah, it didn't cast yeah. Symphonic casted it on themselves instead of uh, Hello. But uh, Hello was uh, consumed by Opti, and so it may have been hard and brought uh, pulled out of range, so they couldn't connect right into yeah. the Sin Ultimate point blank. I don't. Does that actually hit if he's inside the um, Kinch uh, stomach? Uh, it does not. You're un you're untargetable if you're inside Tom Kinch ult for either side, enemy or ally. But I know one thing I'm going to point out is this CS lead mid is not where I would have expected it to go. At least before level got an item. Hold oh, on. and looks like Spookbreed is freely caught out. There's ultimate from Renata dropped on top. He does re engage on Symphonic. There's ultimate from Aurelia picked up with a Q. And Hayes tried to save him, but get us dead. Yeah, unfortunately, the kill goes over to Symphonic. You're happy to get the kill. Looks like we're looking for a possible dive top lane with Volleyball Ultimate. Yes, they do not have a Herald to get the tower free. It looks like he'll just freely engage Paper Wall for Junior and try and scare him off. Takes a couple of tower shots there and looks like they'll get it and get tested. Yeah, that's a, a pretty good cross map play from uh, Team Bi Week. I'm not entirely sure if they fully knew, but. I believe they did. They got the bot tower, actually getting first tower gold off of it, and DZG gets the top uh, top outer in response, also getting this second herald. So DZG four for four early, on early game objectives. And I mean, if you're team bye week, you are kind of in the spot you didn't want to be in. Oh no! Oh, it looks like level is dead in the water right here, going deep and too deep, getting caught and ulti comboed. Hayes picks it up, and Azure sent to save, but was not there in time. Does send the bubble lift as uh, Team Bywick pushes down this mid outer. So, Loveful there kind of caught with his pants down, not respecting where, where the people on Team Bywick could be. And, I mean, if you're looking on super on Ultra Bright side, you traded an Ash ult for Stena and Tom Pinch ultimate. So, you do have a bit of a play to possibility for a play with some of your other engage options since Elysium has multiple of those but it's true yeah going back to my previous thought I was gonna say Elysium's kind of where they want to be there before that before that pick they were basically even they're ahead on all early game neutral objectives so now Team Bywe can't just say, yeah, we'll wait until 35, 40 minutes when our Senna's online and fight you. Mm, that's true, but they still have an opening to uh, curb stomp that if they can get some of these outer towers out of the way. Especially since they got the early dragons and the, what, third dragons up when? In a minute 30? Yeah, third dragons up in a minute 30. Uh, one thing that we're seeing a lot of people doing nowadays is rushing the Umbral Glaive onto the Senna. And one thing I've noticed in both seeing professional games of Senna and in my own games is when you do this, you're really hindering your damage. You have to, you're not really doing as much until you get that Eclipse. Yeah, because that's meant for a utility item, right? To clear wards. Yeah, so yes, you're getting the increased vision control. But your team is facing a possible 18, or sorry, 19 minute soul point, so a 24 minute soul if like these teams are killing it on spawn. And you don't have the time as a fasting Senna to sit and get at that much gold whenever you're the team's late game damage source. That is true. They are looking for trying to start a fight over here to get someone to overstep or get a good root combo, but finding no purchase on either side as they just uh, throw some little big pokes back and forth in the mid lane. Yeah, and real quick before this before this fight inevitably inevitably happens, I am not a fan of Papa Wall going top lane at this point. You, it is 10 seconds till the dragon come dragon spawns in. You cannot apply pressure quick enough and pull somebody over 
to make that worth it. You're losing a lot of pressure bot lane. And now Elysium is staring down the barrel of a... Oh, there's the engage. There's Ultimate from Cinnamon. Pick it out with haze damage. His body gets blown out of the water as ICG goes deep in with a swale. The on four members of Vibe takes down the Sin on the back line. There goes our brother with Ultimate on top. Gets the sun, goes straight for Haze and the jugular as the Swain still sustains with the Vibe on top. Down goes the the uh, Haze. Down goes Opti. You're trying to eject, but does not. Sweet Breed does take down the Swain, but it's alone here with Paperwall Jr. Jack's teleporting in on top of Angry Present. Gets the auto stun combo and does take down with a crit hit on top of Vibe. Did the sustain heal and takes down two. Double for Paper Wall for Junior, able to get there in time to save the Dragon Play team fight for Team Bi Week versus Elysium. Yeah, Paper Wall kind of making me eat my words as I was saying them. Able to utilize the TP, catches DCG Hello, and that fight I feel like can mostly be broken down to DCG not res not being on the same page as the wind to getting that dragon and feeling rushed because it for the three side of the phonic hello and icg who were in the mid lane they had to get into river and you just didn't have the presence of angry present and lovable to be able to make that into an even fight even with the flank by the time lovable and angry present got there you had already lost symphonic and hello so you're still fighting a 3v5 yeah, it did seem like Team Bi Week rotated early into that river with the mid group. They pressured and left, and then mo the rest of uh, Lacey's team was uh, Irelia and the Volibear was down there helping the Herald push to make sure it connected to the tower. Yeah, so, I mean, if you're Elysium, you're kind of sitting to think, you had a lot of good things in that fight. ICG was pumping out the damage with his ultimate on, I believe it was four members at a time. And. You need to try and figure out ways to optimize that without getting caught like that again. So you want to start saying, hey, Zymphonic, you need to be taking super safe paths and because you're getting caught a lot of the times before some of these plays in both the laning phase and in that last dragon fight. Yeah, it was definitely... Um... Elysium's uh, fight to win there, especially with how well the Swain positioned and Irelia went to go pick off the low health units, uh, but there was no follow-up to help speed that process up, so it stalled enough time for uh, Paper Wall for Junior to come down with the teleporters and clean it up. Yeah, and as these teams kind of posture around, maybe play a little bit of a game of chicken on for this, with this Jax, tp this Jax bot and this Baron, uh, just run the hypothetical with me of if that fight was fought 5v5, even with the spacing, hold on. Oh, as they free engage on Paperwall Jr., Sin ulti fired downtown, trying to help uh, Paperwall for Jr. get out of that situation. But Angry Present Lovable tag teaming the poor guy. Oh, but does get the double stun, inject, hop to the ward, control out. And Zivana gets, oh no, stops Opti from getting on top of it. There's the Zerath ultimate, but and stopped immediately by DZG. Hello, right there, point blank, Ash Arrow ultimate. Here comes the re-engage from Senna. There's the snot snare, the Renard ulti. Does connect to uh, Haze. Wait, and there's a flash, Volibear on top of it. Cutting off the entire, cutting off Haze with Lovable picking up the Senna Ash damage following up to get the kill on Bubble Lift. Well played by Elysium there, taking down two members of By Team Wigan, possibly two towers. Getting the outer mid and looks to be the inner mid as the full five man team of Elysium pushes down, barreling down on team Bioweek's mid inner. And looks yeah. like they will engage. There's the full hit combo and they back up a little and they re engage. It's, oh, the tower shots. Toomey taken by Symphonic there. Looks like that will end the siege by Elysium. Yeah, Elysium kind of saying, you're not, I'm not trapped in here with you, you're trapped in here with me with the pick on the Phonic, something that Bi Week has done a lot so far, and they almost got him. He was able to interrupt the Tom Kinch engage, buy a lot of time, and Hello, him and Hello were able to buy enough time for the three Fed members of their team to come and respond a lot quicker. And that's really the point of the spot lane. The point of the spot lane isn't to do a ton of damage and be the strong side. Yes, Ash ADC can definitely do that damage, especially with the Kraken Slayer and the, I believe that's Lord Dom's coming out second item. 
Yeah, but it's ugly. You you have a three and two Irelia who is and whole half item up. You have a two and one Swain who is a ha whole half item up, and you have a two and one Volley Bear who is even, but even against a Nudir is slightly ahead because Nudir's job is going to be a lot different than Volley Bear is in this comp that or in this game. That is true, and Jax is picking up a st uh, steady lead and a hefty bounty with Udir, um, and to get that outer uh, top tower for free with his little bit of split push that's uh, starting to pay off and come online. Yeah, lovable, be top going top lane, pushing out that wave, now rotating down for this dragon. It's going to be here in 14 seconds, so Elysium has first access to this bot lane, bot river, oh. and they also... Get a pick on Spirit Beetle with the Ash Arrow on top. They will engage. Renata gets stunned, rooted, combo knocked up by Opti as Volsmir from Renata does connect to the back line and the front as the Varela goes deep, 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 takes down the center. Meanwhile, the rest of there is response. Jack teleports in from the side. There's a Swain engaged, but they do manage to pick up Lovable, who is by themselves the three members of Team Bi Week. They re engage. Ash is getting connected with all the Zareth barrages and bombardment. And Jax re engages, takes it down with one more auto hit combo. Volibear goes too deep and gets picked up. ICG trying to 4v1 right here with the ultimate. It's enough sustain, but is it enough? Pierwall gets the auto combo and they're kiting, re engaging, and coming back in. Looks like we'll get split breed, but he will not take for Pierwall and we'll go down finally to team bi week. Yeah, ICG being able to survive so long at the end there, but it's just not enough. And now, if you're at least in, you're starting to wonder how are we losing these fights? And I think the main answer is gonna be this Jax, who is six and one, likely sitting on a lot of gold. And it's just going to be a monster for Elisa to try and deal with, especially with a heavy attack reliant team comp like they have with the Volibear, the Irelia, and the Ash. That is true. So, I mean, if I'm Elysium, what I'm trying to say is, hey, we need to not be diving their backline as much, and we need to be trying to kill this Jax so the other three members of our team can even have a chance to breathe. And Baron is still on the table. It's even on dragons right now. Uh, third soul point is on the table in a bit, about what, four minutes? So right now the big contest is dragon and towers for objectives. Yeah. Uh, one thing that we've seen a lot of, and I hate to kind of drive this point home because I've said it a few times, is Zephonic's positioning on this Renata has really cost DZG a lot of these fights. Or at I least a lot of positioning in them, because he's not able to survive long enough and get the W on the, let's say, the Irelia to better kill the backline with the increased attack speed. He's having to use it on himself to try and survive where it still doesn't offer the, all that much. That is true. Oh, Senna's starting to get a lot of spirit sacks right there. Yeah, and if production can do me a favor, if we can see how many sacks that Senna has. I know we haven't really been ch keeping up with that all game, and we'll let y'all know as soon as we're able to find that out. But she's bound to be at, if I want to take a guess, probably closer to 100 at this point. So she's really getting that increased range. It's going to be really hard for her to get, to get on top of her. She's probably yeah, around 100, maybe a little less. It could be like close to 100, but uh, I mean, she has died a lot. There was a oh. Zerath ultimate, but just one? That was weird. I was don't four. know if he meant to cast that or meant to cancel it. Either oh, way. Team. Oh, Ash Arrow, whoa! But Senna takes the blood of it and full engaged by Rada. There's Opti trying to disengage, but too late. Two members down. Opti is saved. Bubble if only for a second as both of them get dropped immediately. Double kill on Lovable. And this is looking like a barreling dead uh, situation for this Father's Day as Split Breed is down and out as the Tower Dive connects. And down goes the mid inner for free and looks like a free Baron for DZG Elysium. Yeah, Elysium really pulling the trigger. The second they see the Xerath ult get spent, they know exactly who they're going on. And if you're Bubble, if you are fuming at your at your mid laner, flashes to the side, forces the Senna to get hit, and makes that engage even more valuable. Because I'm not sure if Bubble if dies anyway. 
because uh, there's a strong possibility that the AoE slow on top of the Irelia ult is still enough for them to get on top. But you guaranteed that your ADC died by flashing to the side. Yeah, and as well as taking Opti, who oh, boldly tried to sacrifice with the uh, consuming bubble lift to save uh, bubble lift for a little bit longer, but also the knock up on th uh, three of them in the back line trying to stall uh, the damage to get uh, the ADC out to safety, but it was not able to. And here comes another Ash Arrow, which was oh, caught by uh, Opti there. That's what they well, want, caught ideally. Caught by Tom Kent, you're not really worried if you're the side of Byway. That's kind of who you want it to be hitting because Tom Kinch on two and a half items, really hard for the side of Elysium to kill here, especially with the Thorn Mail. And one thing that's interesting is you have Elysium matching the now threatened 131 on the side of Biweek with the 41, and they're actually collapsing onto this Udir. Uh, looks like they'll stop for vision control, and Turbo for Junior is freely pushing. Looks like they will engage on Opti, hitting the slow combo with Ash and freely melting him down slowly and surely. Teleport being pulled out, the trigger was pulled, and looks like the fight will commence as the barrage hits down. Sit all on top of the I mean, all's and trying to kick from the back line. But Jax is going deep, deep, deep on top of Hello, and looks like he will get dropped one more auto, and it's down for the count. Zavano forced the flash over the wall, will survive the majority of this fight. As Vala gets in there, the zone gets hit, and Irelia gets on top with four members and trying to 4v1 here. But here comes Swain re engaging with the body, and they do connect, taking down one member of it. And it looks like. There goes another two for Lovable, and it looks like Paperwall will be the last one alive with Split Braid. Opti coming, re-engaging, but Jax gets dropped immediately by Lovable Combo and the Swain of ICG damage. The two carries carrying it out as the rest of members of Elysium down for the count. Split Breed will get out as well as Opti by the uh, Infernal Dragon. Yeah, but now if, you hit, now if you're on the side of Elysium, you're wondering, can we threaten this dragon? Because Split Breed is still up, and they don't know the smite charges on the side, so they are going to threaten it. Likely look to turn if I were to take a guess. Looks like Opti will get caught out here and hits the shield. There's the stun. Will he be able to taunt away? No. Just enough damage by Lovable to pick it up. And this that is like the likely the worst outcome if you're the side of Team Bioweek. Because now, not only did you lose the fight, or can you you went even with it. You went three for three, but you're now having just disjointed backs. So now you are a four v five on the side of this map. Yep, an uncontested third. One more, and it's Soul Infernal for Elysium. Yeah, Soul is now on the table for Elysium in five minutes. Definitely kind of later than they were hoping for, but. You got a few shutdowns on some of your big carries, like the Irelia, uh, now sitting on three and a half items, still keeping up with half an item over. And just look at some of these CS leads. Uh, for Paper Wall in the top lane, you have about a 20 CS lead, which, with the amount of grouping that ICG is doing, is kind of to be expected. The bubble is, I don't know if you want to go there. Oh, and there's the root combo, but Swain's okay with that because, oh, nope, the stun from Udyr saves it, and Bubble Lift's still low, and they're not giving up as they completely connect, Angry Present gets on top, and there's the damage followed by Hello, and down it goes! Bubble Lift is bubbled down. Yeah, and you feel like Elisa spent a lot, but fundamentally they spent two item actives and Volley Bear Ultimate for the Sinna who is scaling. That's kind. That's a pretty worth trade for Elysium and ICG gonna go top to respond to uh, Paper Wall, and while meanwhile the rest of Elysium sieging. I don't think ICG can handle this by himself. Paper Wall was able to two v one earlier. Will it be able to here? Meanwhile, Lovable is fighting the split read for the other split push down the bot side. Looks like ICG is winning this. Nope, just wait. He's just out it for the inhibitor. He get some autos off. Will he re-engage? It doesn't look like it's in his favor. He does get some autos, does not connect, no, the root does connect, and the center ulti from downtown to keep him alive. He is d dead set on this, but the eye mark from ICGE connects, and there's the root, and down it goes! Defended the split push and stopped Paper Wall for Junior in his tracks. That is... Honestly, that is the per I think that's the perfect person for you to send for Paper Wall. Anybody else you send 
send gets really punished by the Jax uh, E, but ICG doesn't need to auto you at all. All you have to worry about is getting stunned, and he actually blocks it with his hourglass. Yep. Getting a shutdown, getting more gold into his pocket. And now the top side of Elysium with ICG 6-2 six two, six on this Swain now up uh, half an item. Or not really, he's about even now. Now that I look at it, and you have Lovable. He is four fully completed items compared to Hazed, three and an... Uh, Grievous wounds over the names kind of blanking from my mind at the st at the moment. The Oblivion Orb or yeah, the Oblivion Orb, the yeah. Upgrade. The Oblivion Orb is the only thing, and the basic Oblivion Orb doesn't really off you a whole lot on the side of Grievous wounds or stats since it got nerfed with the durability patch taken down. I believe all the way to twenty five percent. Yeah, a lot of recommendations from people I know is to uh, just skip to the final item, don't bother with the orb. As well, Team Biweek just starts the Baron with all members up, but looks like Jax is still split pushing and the top ta uh, inhibitor, no less. And there's the full engage as Angry Person goes deep on Opti, Sin is kited back to safety, ICG not being able to find purchase in the backline, near is lovable, but this is get on top of Opti, Opti will be the sacrificial lamb it looks like. 14 by Wick. No, it looks like Swain pokes it and forces the blast cone back them over. But Zimbotic's too low. Does connect, gets the shield. Is enough to get the sleep raid. Here comes Paperwall for Junior after getting the inhibitor and tries to reconnect to the fight. Gets a stun and picks it up with the ultimate barrage from Hayes in the back line. And looks like Jax will be 1v4ing here with the help from long range artillery. Hello gets dropped by, gets the three man stun. Sina ulti from Bubble Lift. Uh, stun, root, heal, and does get him out. Does drop. Paper wall for Junior two as two member. Oh, and there's the engage from Ultimate and Top of them. Two root and down it goes. Only one member left and he's zoning us to death. And triple kill given to ICGE. That looks like a free Baron or an inhibitor. That should be at least threatening the game. The only people you have to worry about is Opti up in six seconds. But you have an Irelia with Borg. You are not concerned about the single tank support. Now, if you want to play it safe, which... This is gold. A lot of teams want to play it safe. It's perfectly understandable. You take this inhibitor, you back up, you get the soul, which is up in t 13 seconds. So a perfect fight, a perfectly timed fight for the side of, Ele side of Elysium. Now being able to threaten the soul. And you just have such disjointed spawn timers that I don't even know if Biweek has a chance to contest this besides the Miracle Steel. That's true, and looks like it will be a free uncontested soul here, Infernal given over to Team Elysium. Yeah, so Infernal Soul on the side of Elysium, and now the question is, do they, are they able to deal with this Jax? They were able to deal with him last fight, but how much of that was chalked up to Jax being so late to the fight? If Jax was there on time, would it have come out differently? Likely so, but now Elysium has even more items, even more gold, and that's roughly, I believe it was the math was done, about $4,000 4, gold worth of stat uh, for the Infernal Soul. So now, Biweek is posturing for this Baron. They may try just a miracle start Baron and see what happens. Bubble Lift is really risky. You have an Ashalt coming in. Gonna go wide. It did swing and a miss there. The Baron is on the table. Soul is there. Oh. I, no, I am. Uh, just yeah. making sure we're all good. Yeah. As the Jack yeah. starts to try and catch out Hello here, but gets spotted out by the Swain Oracle Vision. They, he's pretty much dead to rights here. Uh, he needs to be very careful. He's trying to bait into getting at least a kill here. A, there's a slow. Does not connect. Near does the root. He's avoiding, dodging it. There's a connect. He's forced to jump. But there's a sin ultimate yet again. Trying to save Paperwall Jr. Blast comes over, but re-engage on Obdi by Vibear. Trying to hold off the three. Paperwall Jr. doing the grand escape here. There's a slow. Looks to re-engage. Does not connect. Looks like a split push from Udyr gets the bot inner tower. And they will, oh, he will engage, force flash out a hello, re-kite, and down goes Paperwall for Junior. Caught out, but a long dragged out kite to stall for time as 
uh, split breed split pushes and gets that bot in her. Only way we're able to tell if that if all that that was spent top lane is worth is if at least we could get something in the next 43 seconds before Paperwall is respawned and able to TP in. It looks like Lovable is starting up the Baron, soloing and unless it is found out. But what is Bioweek team able to do? Because Split Breed's bot lane, sieging the inhibitor, your team is trying to stop Baron and you're taking an inhib tower. And there's Barrage shot. They're just stalling for the Barrage timer to run out. And there it goes. And that's a free uncontested Baron. They do get a mid inner tower though for that, since the rest of them do stay. They're just focused on pushing the towers here as ICGE is left on defense duty versus these four members. And there's an Ash Arrow from downtown. Opti gets him to opt out, pulling him in the stomach, but it's not going to be enough. Here comes the Ronaldo barreling down, and down goes the Kenshin. Looks like no, it looks like Santa goes down first, so I lovable. And now goes Opti, and down goes a Split Breed as well as Zerath. Four members down, Baron in their pocket. This looks like it's the game ending play here for Elysium over by the walls of their own base. Only thing you have to be concerned about is Paper Wall keeping top and trying to base race. Base race. So you have ICG backing in response. And he okay, does yeah. go for it immediately, as you predicted. ICG is ready there to defend with Baron minions, and the inhibitors troll them, and it's up. It's not oh. going to be done. It's over. It was a good idea in theory, but it was not being able to applicate it because the inhibitor trolled them out of it. ICG -E should win this pretty easily, or the game ends before that even happens. GG. Good game. Game two, Elysium winning. A uh, technical 2-0, but really... Stickly, it was just 1-0. It was the best of one. We'll just try the site. For both teams, we'll just say this. There were definitely some mistakes. Elysium had some positioning things that you were concerned about. And Team Bye Week, it felt like they had a lot of how how do you put this how, a lot of macro choices that got that game out of hand they had a fed jack and they just weren't able to utilize it Forty six thousand damage it's, on, it's swaying yeah i'm looking it's at that swaying. that's pretty high so that is a lot haze was their other, only other damage output uh from zura that was the highest thirty two thousand five hundred and thirteen. yeah and i will say this about the about bubbles on Senna, we meant I mentioned early on about rushing the eclipse kind of hinders your damage. Bubbles never was really able to pump out a lot of damage. Only actually got out damaged by everybody on his team from both being engaged on and what I what I would chalk up to the, the poor itemization. Yeah, the only one uh, Bubble Lift was able to beat in damage was uh, the Zabonic, who's one in nine and died a lot. It was almost used pretty much as bait to uh, try and bait them into winning the fights sort of thing, because they knew, you know, uh, Zabonic was going to die because of how behind Zabonic was. Yeah, uh, I mean, look at that vision score. 129 on the side of Zabonic. May have died a lot. Definitely a really good vision control. And for the side of Team Bye Week, they really kind of struggled with vision. But not to harp on Team Bye Week, both teams made mistakes. Elysium able to come out on top, get the win, and now advance to 4 0 game record, 2 0 series record. Team Bye Week, I believe, falling down 0 2 0 4. So an unfortunate start for them. But. Elysium definitely showed some weaknesses in this game. You had Zephonic getting caught out a lot. You mm -hmm. had a, a few fights not going the way you intended, even though you're the one you were the one picking it. For a strong start though by them, for sure, with the early uh, neutral objective leads uncontested and you know good picks on their side. And but a then, strong start. Yeah, then and... the fights went south, of course, uh, not how they wanted, but eventually they they tightened it up a little bit. Yeah, so just kind of wrapping things up. Both teams, a lot to work on. A lot of things you can carry into next week with your scrimmages. Uh, we here we do apologize for how long it took us to get into a game. Game one being FF by Team by Week. So this will actually be the entire stream. 
uh, Ionic, you have any final thoughts regarding this game? It was fun to watch. Uh, interesting decisions. Um, you know, uh, don't count team by week out, uh, it looks like. Uh, they still had, uh, uh, you know, chips and split pushes to offer and, you know, threaten. Obviously, they got trolled out by the inhibitor there, but um, if they could have just bought some more time, maybe they could have won with that jack split push strat. And, you know, of course, the umbral clave thing on Senna. Um, yeah. As far as Elysium, just keep it up, tighten up the, the reins on the team fight, you know, plan it out, and try and keep that support from dying a lot. And you'll be fine. You'll be coasting, sort of thing. Yeah, well, thank you, everybody, for coming out, watching the series between Elysium and Team Bi-Week. We will see you all next week when Elysium takes on one other team in, in the Freljord division. I'm not sure which one. We'll see. <laughs>